What is up everybody? It is Chris from Team Aquascape. We have such a fun project today. We are going to be doing a pond addition to a pond we built about four and a half years ago. You guys ready for a good one? Let's get started. We are going to build a pondless waterfall. The easiest way to learn something is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. We appreciate you guys tuning in. Here's the existing pond. We've got a wetland filter up there. Beautiful cascading waterfalls. There's a bridge element over here. And then you can see this little intake area where the skimmer is located back over there. That's the area, guys. This whole area in through here is where we're going to be exploding and making so much bigger out and through here and deeper for those beautiful fish to have more room to thrive and survive in here. So we've got an intake system that we're going to be putting on as well as using the existing skimmer. We've got a 25 by 30 liner. We've got about 50 feet of pipe. We're gonna be doing some circulation jets. We're gonna be reincorporating that bridge that you saw over there back into the pond. But we're just doing an addition that after the homeowners lived with this for a few years, they decided, you know what? We need to go bigger in order to make this our dream pond. So that's what we're here to do. We've got Zach behind me. We've got a few more guys coming with. We'll see them in a few minutes. The rock has already showed up. So we're getting that staged and ready to roll. Next thing we'll be getting this pond drained, get the fish out and then start demo so that we can really make things happen. And so a lot of work to get done today, but we are going to do it and we're going to get to the finish line on time, beating our deadline. Let's go. So we've got the pond completely demoed to the point where we'll be able to pull off our seam. We started excavation. We're down at about 22 inches for this bottom shelf. We still need to dig in our snorkel centipede apparatus and lay out our aqua blocks for that bottom suction that will feed the jets. But considerably different looking now with the shape. We've gained probably double the volume that we had in the existing pond just by digging all of this out and extending it out. We're just cleaning up some of the edges, loving off the bottom then we'll lay everything out after lunch spray paint it and we'll kind of explain that process to you as we go and why we're putting the components where we are but making great progress and nice to have many hands make light work of all this so cool after lunch. We're starting to seam the two pieces of liner together. That's one of the biggest challenges when adding to an existing water feature and not tearing everything apart and coming with an entirely new single piece of liner. So you guys have seen us do it hundreds of times in our videos. Now is not like in any other, but we want to come over here, get everything nice and prepped, get all this gunk and residue off of there. Juan and Luis and Zach are over here scrubbing, trying to get all that scale, build up, mud, any residue. One thing that we have found to really, really help are these Scotch bright pads. Normally we just get the ones that don't have the sponge on the other side, but you can see as you go through, it really, really takes off a lot of that stuff and scouring that liner without hurting it at all. So I would recommend using these over those wire bristle ones any day of the week. Those can pierce the liner and little pinholes would be very difficult to find. So we're gonna finish getting this thing prepped, dried off, primed, double-sided tape. Then we'll get the other liner in here, kind of place it where we need it to be. Go ahead and prime that and then attach it to the double-sided and then the six inch cover tape over the top and then we can get into the fun stuff which is always the rocking and rolling also one challenge that we always run into is getting all these wrinkles out in the liner so we put a 2 by 12 board resting it on top of some of these aqua blocks just to get it up to the height that we need it to be but we pull everything out nice and straight so it's important to have a few sets of hands for this as you've seen in some of our other videos so all right Juan, what do you think easy right yeah, 
We are back. Day two on this project. This is that snorkel centipede aqua block setup. This is going to give us that bottom suction. There is at the bottom, we've already rinsed out the gravel and everything that was kind of backfilling the trench around the centipede that runs underneath these aqua box. The idea is as we drop a pump down in here that will feed our circulation jets for this back side over here, and we're getting that bottom suction. So this is a large pre-filter for the pump that will be recirculating. So we're lessening the likelihood of solids and debris getting clogged in that pump, even though it's a solids handling pump, but pushing solids through that circulation jet line. What it also does is it's drawing all the crap down through the bottom, adding a little bit of more of mechanical filtration. Of course, we're still gonna have a skimmer on this project, which will pull that top water debris, but anything that falls to the bottom gets pulled down to this area. And it's also gonna make it very, very easy for us to do a clean out on this pond because we drop a pump down in the very bottom and everything as we're cleaning and gets washed down all comes down to this snorkel centipede action and it makes a clean up very, very easy. So just a little cool bell and whistle on this project. Another bell and whistle that I'm really hoping, fingers crossed that the customers go for is adding a new bridge element, a much wider, longer bridge, something a little bit beefier and more substantial to help with the overall look of this pond. So we're getting ready to throw that in, let them see what it looks like and have them make the decision on whether or not to move forward with that. Fingers crossed, I think they're really gonna love it, but that's gonna be the next step after we disguise all this. Thing. We went with the bridge. Thank goodness. Thank goodness we went with the bridge because it totally would have looked weird to have this little poop pick coming across here. We got the bridge. Chris and Zach are over here just kind of buttoning all this up. You can kind of see some of the rock work Chris is doing underneath here. We ended up using some of those structural wall block and then just kind of bridging our way up. You do see we have some aqua block panels. We are going to lock everything together underneath here to keep this thing from rocking back and forth. Juan's over here. He's got our next big kind of frame rock. Now when I say frame rock, it's not for waterfalls. It's actually going to frame out this bridge. This is going to come over here. Then we got JD and Luis over here. What are you guys doing? We're adding a three inch ball valve to the wetland just so we're able to adjust the flow coming off the top waterfalls. And we can also, while we're servicing the pump, if it ever goes bad or anything, we can just close that ball valve and simply do the pump and all the back pressure doesn't come back pouring into the pond. Gotcha. Cause right now the check valve that's in the skimmer box is holding all the water in that line. If the pump ever does shut off. Correct. And when we were demoing the pond or this area, that was the last thing we did just so we didn't pump out all the water and it all back flowed. So that's smart. We should have done that to begin with. What are you doing? Are you saying, call me, call me, 8675309, right? That's your number? Okay. All right. Nice. All right. So we're going to get some more rocks set. Things are definitely happening and we're going to cruise because it's good hair day for all of us. You like my plumas? Look at that forehead. It's more like five head. All right. Let's go, Juan. We got the guys working on hooking up the faceplate to the skimmer. Normally we do that right from the very beginning, but we didn't realize that the existing skimmer that we were working with, we needed to replace a couple pieces on it. So we had to bring those back the second day. Anyways, a little bit out of order. Would have preferred to do that first, but we're gonna get that hooked up. We're gonna continue rocking in all this section of pond behind me and we're gonna get going. Today is wrap up day. So we've got a lot of work ahead of us, a lot of cleanup. Fortunately, we've already done the clean outs and some of the other tedious stuff. So now it's just kind of focusing on this section over here and then all this top edge so hopefully it'll be a good day well since you are seeing my face you can assume that this project is a wrap it turned out absolutely stunning i love the shape of the pond the functionality of the circulation jets the bridge and of course the waterfalls and the other portion of the original portion of the pond is stunning as well but i think we tied it in really well together so let me just turn the camera on and show you exactly what we did now water is a little cloudy still but this is that extension portion of the pond remember we started our excavation and demolition right here. We tore apart that big rock right there, this rock, and then dug everything out back over here. It was just a little sliver that ended right about there. So this is all new in through here. Skimmer's back over there, which is a much different location than it was. It was originally right about there. There's that enormous wood slab bridge that just turned out beautiful. It leads you right across to this stepper pathway going that way. I love this intake cove area 
you can see everything kind of breezing around that rock on the right and those bubbles coasting into the skimmer basket. Totally awesome. I love this rock just barely underwater right there with an aquatic plant shelf and this floating rock right there that is supported by a couple of boulders as pedestals. And then you can see the agitation in the water. Right here we've got a series of jets pushing from all over the place. Back in that corner we've got one down at the very bottom and then our snorkel centipede system was right underneath here and with our aqua blocks as well. So that's our circulation jet that does these jets over here in this area. I mean you can just see the agitation on that water preventing anything from really collecting in this cove. It'll kind of swirl back there and then eventually get kicked back out into the current and sucked into the skimmer box there. Really really neat. Some different edge treatments down and through here, over here, turned out absolutely incredible. We brought this boulder in to kind of frame out where the bluestone coping on top of those spillway walls ended. This is, of course, the original portion of the pond. You can just barely see the fish down in there. So they're kind of getting used to their new environment. And then, of course, the killer waterfalls coming out of the wetland filter. And we did a clean out on it while we were here. A little bit of foam on top. The fish did spawn in the holding tank that was sitting back over here in front of the garage over the weekend so they wanted to keep all the eggs so we sprayed them back out with our clean out pump into the pond so we'll see what happens really really love how it turned out i love the wooded setting back here the ferns pastas camisiparis a lot of this stuff will fill back in and bounce back once you get some water on it and some cooler temps but it turned out absolutely incredible thanks for watching you guys if you have any questions on how this was put together leave us a note in the comment section below and we'll be sure to get back to you thanks again for watching till next time juan what are you Say. Pretty nice. Pretty nice? Yeah. You say, say, see you next time. See you next time. No, in Spanish. Si nos vemos en el otro trabajo. <laughs> All right. Hey, good work, everybody. Thank you very much.